Langston Thomas, but I go by LT, a name that everybody across the country would be more familiar with real soon. Playing high school football in Texas, I put up some pretty decent numbers, but when you got schools like DeSoto and Duncanville soaking up all the attention, a dime like myself would get lost. By the end of my senior year, with zero offers on the table, I thought about enrolling to SMU to stay close to home, but instead, I walked on here at Memphis, somewhere where I actually got a chance to be the guy early. I don't want to sit and wait my turn, even if I have the talent, just because the guy has seniority over me. I want to completely revamp and rebuild this program from bottom to top and right now i'm the backup quarterback but if i continue the ball day in and day out in no time i'll be qb1 next practice i'm on a mission i'm doing everything i possibly can dotting up my receivers making the right reads all of the above after practice coach pulled me aside and told me straight up after our game against duke i'll have an opportunity to take over that spot as qb1 that's all i need to hear and what can i say the grind is real they got me out here holding kicks but it's all good though this won't last long trust me and with the 41 to 3 lead early in the fourth quarter i actually check in at qb i fake the handoff take off upfield i get hit by this safety come down a little weird and i have to be helped off the field position battle time i got my foot on the starting qb's neck i roll out to my left stop and start with some great blocks i'm getting into that end zone let's go and after practice it was pretty evident to me the coaches the entire team the staff everybody that i deserve and i am qb1 after i win last week we're ranked number 24 in the country but this week we got mid tennessee and i'm gonna roll out to my left and my boy khalif mccoy gonna lay it all out on the line to make this crazy catch down here in the red zone with a chance to punch it in for my first college touchdown my boy where Brandon Sims gonna pick it up, no problem. Mid Tennessee is up seven. Just over a minute left here in the first half. We gotta punch one in. I'm taking off to my left. I get a great block from my boy McCoy, and I'm getting out of bounds after picking up some big yardage. It's early, and I'm trying to establish who my go-to guys are gonna be. I would love to rely on everybody, but I know that's just not possible. But for now, we're gonna spread the ball around to everyone as much as I can. Down here in the red zone, the plan is to throw the ball. But the second we left the huddle, I knew exactly what I was gonna do. I'm rolling out to my left, taking off full speed. I get into the end zone and we tie this game up. A very short but manageable fourth down situation we're not only looking for the first we want the big play and i find my boy joseph mcdonald right across the middle for the touchdown we take the lead being a right-handed quarterback i roll out to my left a little more than i should it's somewhat of a bad habit but i'm taking off i'm out running some guys i get up field and i nearly take this one in for six but i pick up 35 on the plate my first career start as a college quarterback here at memphis i balled out for the most part i put on the show three touchdowns on the day and we secured a win we got to keep it rolling though Already down 7 nothing here early in the first quarter against Arkansas State. I'm going to roll out to my right with heavy pressure in my face. I'm going to deliver a dime to my boy D-Mac up the field. And yet again, down here in the red zone, set up the pass. But instead, I'm going to leap into the end zone for a tug. Arkansas State takes back the lead. I'm rolling out to my right. And just before I go out of bounds, I see my boy Khalif up the field wide open. And off one foot, I'm going to throw a dime. He's going to walk in for a touchdown. Now we have the lead. Tie game here in the fourth. I'm rolling out to my left. I see a slew of white jerseys and red helmets in front of me. I'm going to plant my feet find my boy Marcus wide open and he's gonna do the rest up the sideline untouched for the touchdown second and one I look up field nobody's open I'm taking off slipping past his defensive end and at this point I'm just trying to finish this play strong I break a tackle and I get tripped up just before I can make it into the end zone I've been trying to establish a connection with all my receivers but my go-to guy so far Khalif McCoy and as I say his name he's wide open in the end zone to put this game to bed picking up our third straight win of the season but going into conference play next week can we continue to ball at this level against some of the better teams that we have on our schedule we about to see at home this week a top 25 matchup conference play we got to step up and ball out this week our undefeated record is on the line second and long i'm gonna hit my boy bj in the flats on this halfback screen he's gonna take this one up the sideline with great blocks ahead and going to the end zone for a damn near 50 yard touchdown down here in the red zone looking to take the lead i'm gonna hang back deep comfortably dot my boy brandon sims for the easy touchdown second and two i'm dropping back deep rolling out just outside the pocket i got my boy j mac up the field wide open i throw this ball a little late but the safety can't get there in time he falls into the end zone for a touchdown my offensive line does a great job protecting me up front especially when i'm in the gun i see my boy marcus going up the numbers i throw this ball deep in stride for a 50 yard bomb now we're here in the fourth quarter and we have the lead just under two minutes left on the clock i'm gonna take off pick up a big play with my legs and we're gonna run this clock out and secure this dub against a ranked opponent in conference play we got Houston this week, and this crowd is loud, but I love the energy. And I connect with my boy D-Mac on a big-time play to put us in the red zone early. It's first and goal. I peek they got a QB spy on me, hoping I scramble, but I know this. I run as further as I can to my right, and I find my boy Ken in the back of the end zone for an insane toe-tapping touchdown. Throughout these last four games, in all honesty, Brandon Sims has been looking like my number one receiver. And as I say that, off one foot looking like pre-draft Zach Wilson, I put this ball on the money to my guy in the end zone. Up seven just before 
to have on a long first and 15. I look up the numbers with a clear pocket. I got my boy Marcus Carr up the field wide open. That's a walk-in touchdown, no problem. Tie game here in the fourth. We got a little bit of RPO action coming. This safety blitz is untouched, and that frees me up to take off into some open space, picking up the first and more. All throughout this game, I've been getting it done with my arm, but I look up, my receivers are covered, and there's plenty of open green space right in front of me. I'm taking off, picking up another huge 25 yards, and getting out of bounds to stop the clock. It's second and one. I'm going to continue to make plays on my legs as much as possible. I pick up the first down, but getting tackled coming down on my left ankle weirdly as I'm already nursing the injury with that same ankle, it's a pain I cannot bear. And after being helped off the field, I got to watch the backup quarterback, the guy I beat out this season for the starting job, go in and try to win this game. And guess who's wide open in the end zone? My boy, Marcus Carr, to put this game away. We're 5-0 coming into a game against SMU, a team we should beat, but the preparation going into this game all week, I feel like the guys are just not taking this game seriously. One thing about it, I'm always locked in, laser focused, and I'm always going to make plays, but as a collective group, if we don't lock in together, that's going to haunt us in the end. Not only am I already nursing a left ankle injury, but I've been taking off using my legs more than I ever have in my entire life playing football, just trying to be an overall playmaker, and I've been taking some nasty hits. And as much as me and B. Sims have been connecting for some huge plays, me and Marcus Carr's connection is starting to to grow more than I ever thought it would. We've been connecting for some huge plays. He's been outstanding these last couple of weeks. Defense has played great today, but offensively, we've been struggling. Late in the fourth quarter here, second to 10, I'm taking off, picking up the first, but taking some much unwanted contact. Trying to punch one into the end zone or at least leave with three points. My guys up front do a terrible job blocking for me here on first down. I get hit hard, and I can't muster up the strength to get up off the field on my own. We got way too cocky as a team. We take our first L of the season against a team we should have beat, no question, and it didn't help towards the end. I get the wind knocked out of me. Another conference game trying to bounce back from last week's loss. We got undefeated number five ranked Cincinnati, high powered on both offense and defense. But one thing about it, when the level of competition rises, I don't shy away from it. I embrace it. Taking off on first and 10, diving my way into the end zone for a touchdown. A guy who I haven't talked much about, Khalif McCoy. He's been making some plays over the last few weeks, but here on second and one, a monster is catching run for the touchdown. For about a fourth quarter, since his defense has had us in a chokehold since that last touchdown. And their offense, balled out, literally cannot be stopped. Stopped. FCS East this week and was supposed to be a guaranteed win, but I got some pent up frustration from those two back to back L's, so I'm going in and all the way out this week. First and 10, taking off to my left. I make multiple guys miss with some decent blocks up front. I'm taking off untouched all the way to the crib for a huge touchdown to tie this game up. Third in a very long 19, I have seven business days in a clean pocket to try to find one of my receivers, and finally, I connect with Khalif McCoy to pick up the first. And now down here in the red zone, I have no intentions on pitching this ball, even though we're running the option. I take this one in myself to take the lead. First and 10, trying to get into the end zone at least one more time before we check out. I connect with my backup running back, Fox, up the field wide open for a huge play to put us in the red zone. And on the very next play, first and goal, reading the field, nobody's open. I'm taking off and I'm going to pick it up myself to take a 21-7 lead, walk out of here with the dub. We got an extremely talented South Florida team on the road today, and we got them crispy white unis on, so you know we got to step up and ball. First and 10, surveying the field, and to no surprise, no one is open. So I'm going to take off and do it myself, making a few moves and putting in the extra effort to try to pick up a few extra yards. First and goal, empty backfield, surveying the field. I find my boy Marcus Carr wide open in the end zone for the easy touchdown. We're still down seven, though. First and 10 in the gun, rolling to my right. I got my boy J-Mac up the field, wide open. This big catch put us in great position to go down and score. Second and six with great block in the front from my old line i'm gonna find my boy brandon he's running a great route to catch this ball and turn it up field to get into the end zone we fall just short to usf on the road this week taking our third loss of the season i'm not playing the greatest football but i'm not playing bad by any means across the board me and all the guys got to step our game up we got unranked but 7-3 Louisville this week. I don't know what it is about the American Conference this season, but everybody seems to be balling. First and 10, I got heavy pressure in my face, rolling back to the logo, and off one foot, I deliver a dime to VJ. Second and 10, down 7, trying to march our way down the field to go and score. We cannot let this game get out of hand. This crowd is alive, and they're loud. Rolling out to my left here on second and 3, dot my boy Khalif with a big play to put us in the red zone. A crucial third and 11. Surveying the field, no one's open. I bail out of the pocket just a little bit too early, and I get hit. Damn near taking a crazy sack, but I just get rid of the ball in time. With no timeouts left, the clock is running. It's put up a setup time. Do or die. I'm going to take off here on second and 12, put a move on the guy, picking up the first down, getting out of bounds as well. Second and 10, the clock is still running. I need to make a quick play to get out of bounds, but also move the chains. But I'm looking downfield for the big play, but this safety couldn't have played this no better. He comes down with the pick, and I'm hanging my head low. After we walk off the field, taking yet another L this season. 
from a 5-0 and start to currently a 6-4 and record. These last three games of the season will really determine how we label this season as a whole. A first down situation and before the play can even fully develop, I see way too much green in front of me. I'm taking off, cutting in and out, getting up field, putting us at around the 30-yard line. First and 10, rolling out to my right wide. And just when I thought I was going to have to throw this ball away, I connect with J-Mac to put us within one step of the end zone. Second and five, rolling out to the wide side of the field. I got my boy Marcus Carr up the field. I pretty much throw him open. We went off script and it worked out perfectly. Crucial third and one situation. Very hard to complete a pass down here in short distance. I'm going to take off, get into this end zone myself, diving in for the touchdown. The final game of my freshman season. And even though this Charlotte team is 2-9, and nine, we cannot underestimate these guys. I learned from the last time earlier this season. I'm bringing my A game. First down, dropping back, remaining calm in the pocket. Got a guy coming off the edge full speed, but I'm going to drop this one off to Marcus Carr. He's going to pick up 41 yards on this play. First and goal situation, and yet again, before the play can even develop, when I see that green, I'm going every time. I take off and I dive into the end zone, untouched for the touchdown. Charlotte went down and responded immediately to our touchdown. Like I said today, I'm bringing my A game. I throw a dot to my boy K-Dub for the touchdown. It's a tie game here towards the end of the first half. Rolling out to my right, no one's open. I'm going to take off, picking up some much-needed yardage, making some moves, but I should have got out of bounds. I took a nasty little hit. 30 seconds on the clock, a crucial third and goal situation. And within five yards of the end zone, everybody in the stadium knows I'm not looking to throw the ball. I take off picking this one up myself. We take the lead. Offensively, we were pretty much shut down by Charlotte's defense the entire second half. With 30 seconds left on the clock, second and 10, I'm going to find my boy J-Mac up the field to put us in the red zone. And if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Expecting a pass down here in the red zone, first and goal, rolling out to my right. I'm going to leap into the end zone to take the lead, give us the win. We're going to walk out of here victorious. Playing one of my most complete games of the entire season, completing over 50% of my passes, four touchdowns on the day. We secure the dub and we end our season off the right way. Year two here at Memphis, expectations I set on myself and overall for the entire team has been set high. We have a bunch of guys returning from last year's teams, including my boy Marcus Carr, who's shaped up to be my true number one receiver. And when it comes to our offensive line, we've gotten noticeably better, but not to the point where I feel like I can trust them 100% of the time. I still find myself bailing out of the pocket way sooner than I should. And even though I've established Marcus to be my number one receiver, you cannot sleep on my dog, Khalif McCoy, who's looking to have a breakout season this year, and I'm all for it. Red zone action, down here on the one yard line, and at 240. 40 pounds. I don't think there's a soul on this field who could stop me from getting into this end zone. We secured a touchdown. Two tubs through the air, one on the ground. A great week one performance for us as a team. We're looking to dominate this season, and there's no better way to get it kicked off than a win in week one. Back to back home games this week against a one and one Houston team. And when we're in that all black, we're in straight kill mode. We got to walk out of here with a dub. Last season, myself alone, I rushed for nearly 900 yards. And I'm trying to do more through the air this season because some of the hits I take, even at my size, can be a little bit much on a week to week basis. Down here in the 35 yard line, an insane third and 22 situation, but I'm not going to panic. I'm going to remain poised because I got great receivers like Khalif McCoy getting free against man coverage, picking up a touchdown. Now here with the ball back to kick off the second half, I'm going to connect with another one of my outstanding receivers receivers here on second and 10, D-Mac. He's going to fall into the end zone. We take a two-score lead. First and 10, faking the handoff, not knowing if I want to take off or sit in the pocket and be patient. I'm going to do a little bit of both, and when I actually do look up, I got Brandon Sims wide open up the field for the 51-yard bomb. Second and goal, empty gun formation, rolling out to my right. A name you probably won't hear much this season, George Palmer. He's running across the end zone, wide open, just staring me down. I dump it off to him for the tug. We kick off conference play this season with a dub. Nearly 300 yards passing yet again, and another the three touchdown performance. Roll game number one of the season, we have a undefeated Rutgers team whose defense is actually looking pretty solid. To my offensive line, this defense is no problem. Great blocking up front, I drop back deep. I survey the field, I find my boy Brandon Sims open for the touchdown, we strike first. Down one score early in the second quarter, dropping back on first and 10, and somehow they leave my dog, Khalif, wide open in the back of the end zone, we tie this game up. Second and 10, and for the first time today, I got heavy pressure in my face. I'm rolling out to my right, taking off, and before I step out of bounds off one foot delivering the dime of all dimes picking up the touchdown easily my most impressive play so far this season tie game here as we head into the fourth quarter and i know i said you wouldn't hear his name much but coming through in the clutch is my tight end gp we take the lead here another huge win throwing for over 264 touchdowns as a team we're balling out but individually i'm playing some of the best football of my life Coming into this week against UCLA on the road, ranked as the number 24 team in the country, this is when the heat starts to get turned up. We got to step up and ball. Last week, Marcus somewhat disappeared on me, but other guys stepped up, made big plays, so it was fine. But today, he's looking to set out to remind everyone why he's one of the better receivers in the nation. Low scoring, but tie game here late in the second quarter. And with all the guys running goals, somebody's going to be open. And that guy just so happened to be my boy, Chris Gibson. It's pretty amazing to see firsthand and play with a guy who's six foot six at a tight end position. You can split him wide, put him in the 
slot. He can make plays no matter what. I just described my boy D-Mac to a T. Down four points, less than two minutes left here in the fourth quarter. We have to make our way into the end zone. I'm doing everything I possibly can to move the chains. Fourth and 10, a do or die situation. Dropping back, surveying the field. Nobody's open. I'm going to launch this ball straight into coverage and it's going to be picked off and we take our first L of the season. Already down one score to UCF here early in the first quarter, but taking back-to-back -back L's is not an option. We got red zone action down here in about the three or four yard line, and one thing about it, that read option will never fail me. But UCF, they go down and respond immediately, but I'm all for a little back and forth game. Third and 11, I'm gonna connect with my number one receiver, Marcus Carr. We tie this game right back up. And once again, we find ourselves fighting an uphill battle here late in the third quarter, down another score, but if we get the touchdown this time, a PAT will actually give us the lead. And after marching our way all the way up the field using the pretty much the entire back end of the third quarter to get into the red zone first and goal and rolling out to my right and i'm gonna connect with my third string tight end for the touchdown fourth quarter action now here with an opportunity to put this game away i'm gonna connect with no other than the marcus Carr for the touchdown with just about 230 through the air three touchdowns and only seven incompletions on the day your boy lt played a really decent game Kicking off our game this week against Temple with the power option going to the left. Great blocks for my guys outside. I'm picking up 23 yards on this play. And on the very next snap, I'm reading the safety over the top. The second he come towards the middle of the field, I got Marcus Carr up the numbers wide open. I put this ball straight into the end zone for an easy touchdown. Now here on second and goal, my offense is doing a fantastic job blocking up front, giving me more than enough time to connect with Marcus Carr for the second time just here in the first half. First and 10, faking the handoff to my running back, Vince Johnson. Nobody on the field is open whatsoever ever rolling out to my right taking off i'm picking up the first down and some late here in the third quarter a crucial fourth and two situation we could have kicked the field goal but we won it all rolling out to my right extending this play as much as i possibly can i'm gonna connect with my second string running back david fox as expected we secured a blowout win over temple at the crib and once again another three touchdown performance at this point just call me mr consistent trying to defend our top 25 ranking this week against usf we kicked this one off with a huge 34 yard run i peep on the outside marcus is one-on-one -on -one with this corner Corner. And the second I see this safety come down the middle of the field and he don't drop to his side, I already know what time it is. A perfect dot to my number one guy in the end zone for a touchdown. If you ask me, being able to go off script is key to having an explosive offense. And there's nothing more off script than rolling out to my left, throwing up the field after Marcus bounces off his route, picking up 37. I don't know what it is. So far this season, down here in the red zone, I haven't taken off with the ball nearly as much as I did last season. But on third and goal, I'm going to take this one in myself, bullying my way through a few defenders, picking up the touchdown. Second and goal, back here in the red zone trying to extend our lead by two scores rolling out to my right as far as i can run off my back foot and what's supposed to be an interception turns into an insane catch by khalif just under two minutes left here in the third quarter i could easily walk my way to pick up this first down but instead i'm gonna put all my faith in my boy brandon sims launching this one towards the end zone he high points it comes down with the catch let's go today our defense stepped up and went crazy offensively we balled out four total touchdowns on the day one of our better games we played so far this season we got the number six ranked team in the country today at home. A win against these boys can make a major but positive impact on our team. Tie game here early in the second quarter. First and 10, faking the handoff. I got D-Mac up the numbers with a step on the DB, hitting for the big 50-yard play. Crucial fourth and goal situation. And so far this game, D-Mac has been making all of the plays. I don't think he's going to stop here in the red zone, delivering this dime to him, picking up the touchdown. With a four-point lead, 10 seconds left here in the first half, I got my number one receiver, Marcus Carr, wide open up the field. And if he had elite speed, he could have took this one in for six. Second and two towards the end of the third quarter. I'm in the gun. I'm going to drop back and I'm going to connect with my cousin, Alan Thomas, for the big play to put us in the red zone. That fourth quarter mayhem has struck. Just over a minute left. Down four points. We got to make our way into the end zone. I got to be poised and lead my guys to the promised land. We've made our way into the red zone. First and goal. Clock is running. I'm rolling out to my right and I'm going to walk in for the easy touchdown for the upset against the number six team in the nation. I played a really solid game against one of the better teams in all of college football, but across the board as a team, we stepped up and we got the job done. It's a snowy one this week in Cincy, and this Bearcat defense is coming at me full speed. But when you have a receiver like Marcus on your side, you can do pretty much anything. He turns a little to a lot here on this play. Operating out of the gun on this one, dropping back as deep as I possibly can to give myself as much time as possible to read the field. I'm going to connect with George Palmer for the big 20-yard play. We got red zone action. The Bearcat defense is prepared for the pass, exactly what I want. Rolling out to my right, taking off around the edge, and with a QB spy on me, I still managed to dive in for the touchdown. Tie game here on second and goal, back here in the red zone. And as always, that read option, cake. 
easy walk in and take the lead right back. After a block punt for the third time in this game, we're back in the red zone. Here on this power option, I have no intentions on pitching the ball, picking up another tug. We dominated the first half of this game. This Bearcat offense and defense, though, came out the second half and went crazy. And oddly enough, we can't hang on. We finally started to climb the rankings again. On the road against a ranked opponent in conference play, we fall short. We just can't seem to play a complete game. A scoreless first quarter here against 3-6 and six Charlotte on the road, but remember, it's not about how you start, it's about how you finish. Second and goal rolling out to my right, the safety and the DN is hot on my trail, but I'm delivering dots across my body to my boy MC4. A crazy 4th and 16, but I'm making every adjustment possible to make sure this play is a success. Dropping back damn near to the 50, I got my running back, Vince Johnson, wide open in the end zone for the easy touchdown. Empty gun look for me here on 1st and 10. I damn near thought this ref was a DB the way he got in the way, but I'm delivering a dime up the scenes of my boy B sends picking up a huge play 10 seconds left in the third quarter second and goal fantastic protection from my guys up front breaking the pocket a little early me and my boy b sims continue to thrive our connection is insane this game we pick up another touchdown even though this was a game we're supposed to win me and the guys stepped in and we balled out today a great way to bounce back from that terrible air we took last week Lamar Jackson University, a.k.a. Louisville University, ranked number nine in the country, currently at eight and two, just like us, and they came to play this week. Both sides of the ball are pretty dominant. We got to come to play. Here towards the end of the first quarter, a crucial third and ten situation. They're definitely prepared for the pass with two high safeties, but the connection between me and Brandon Sims continues to grow and thrive week to week. Empty gun look here on first and ten, rolling out to my left, plenty of green in front of me. I'm thinking about taking off, but I see Marcus Carr got a step on the defender, off one foot, 63-yard bomb delivered to my main man picking up with that play left off down here on the 15 rolling out to my right and to complete this drive to my boy off one foot yet again marcus Carr picking up the tutty our defense is doing a fantastic job holding louisville's powerful offense to zero we got to capitalize dropping back hanging back deep in the pocket with nothing but time and patience i got that boy mc4 wide open for the 51 yard bomb hands down our most dominant performance of the season thus far 321 through the air two touchdowns but our defense completely shut those boys out great game from the guys we're back ranked within the top 20 this week in conference play against the number 17 ranked team in the nation, 9-2 and two SMU. The connection I've been able to develop and establish with all of my receivers on this offense has been crazy. I know I can count on pretty much any guy within this offense to make a big play. First and goal here towards the end of the second quarter, in the gun, taking off to my left, going in, untouched to pick with the touchdown, and we take the lead. We got fourth quarter action, first and 10, trying to get back into the end zone. SMU has been a step ahead, but today I refuse to crumble, and so does my teammates. We came here to play. So far throughout the season, every time we start to climb the ring, rankings or play against a top tier opponent whether it's conference player just a ranked opponent period we always crumble a fold but today we're gonna step up we will not let our shortcomings define our season just over two and a half minutes left empty gun look i get the snap taken off to my left throwing the ball back to my right i connect with my tight end d mac to pick up the touchdown we now hold a two possession lead today we've done something we failed to do all season and that's dominating an opponent who on paper is a much better team we stepped up and went crazy but individually i have my best game of my college career if you would have told me in the beginning of this season that we would be playing Bama in a bowl game, I'd call cap. But connecting with Khalif McCoy for a 50-plus yard bomb to start this game off, that's how you do it. Midway through the first quarter, we love this empty gun look. And the second I see this safety bite down on B. Sims, I got Marcus Carr over the top, wide open. We strike first for the touchdown. Now here towards the end of the second quarter, fantastic protection up front from my line, dropping back deep, rolling to my right, putting everything I got into this throw. I got my glorious tight end, D-Mac, wide open, putting us in the red zone. Now here on first and 10, taking the snap and like i said any and everybody on this team is reliable when was the last time you heard the name chad morgan the second stream fullback steps up makes a huge play went into the half with this game tied at 14 but by the end of the fourth quarter bamas came out and done what they do best and straight up dominate i'm not gonna stop fighting to the last whistle but this game's been over comparing my passing stats from my freshman season to my sophomore year i've stepped up and balled out across the board throwing a few more picks but overall my performance this season got the job done now of course my numbers through the air has increased but my numbers on the ground took a hit but overall i think I'm one of the more balanced quarterbacks in all of college football. For my junior season, I decided to bet on myself. I transferred out of Memphis, and now I'm here at Vandy in the SEC, the toughest conference in all of college football. Crazy enough, once word got out that I was coming to Vandy, so many recruits through the portal and coming out of high school also committed to the school. But before I even came here, they had some pretty decent guys at the skill position, like my boy Shep, a true number one receiver, great hands, size, everything, speed, you name it. He has every tool of the trade. He's going to be my number one receiver. I'm calling it early. And then on the opposite side, I got a guy like Jaden, who can kick into another gear, burn any secondary in the entire 
that country and go for six on any given play. In week one, we kicked things off in conference play against the number 22 ranked team in the nation at home. And I know I didn't mention him, but I cannot forget about my boy Quincy. He's a straight up baller. Here on second and 12, I got to quiet the home crowd a little bit. They're a little excited that they got a real QB back here slinging that ball. We're rolling all the way to my right off one foot, throwing an absolute dime to my boy Jay in the end zone for the first touchdown. This year, I'm looking to have a more explosive season with my legs. Last season, I had over 700 yards rushing. This year, I'm aiming for at least a thousand. The first quarter's coming to an end, but here on first and 10, rolling out to my right, I do connect with him late, but I got my boy Quincy up the field wide open. Ole Miss took the lead before the second half. I'm going to do everything I can to lead us up the field and put us in the end zone to tie this one up before the second half. First and 10 from the gun, Jay is going to run a perfect corner route. I'm going to deliver this ball, putting us right in the red zone. Now here on first and goal, I'm reading this DN. He's going to bite on the fake handoff and just like that, touchdown. We got a tie game. It's early here in the third quarter. And why are we going for it here on fourth and 12? Because I believe in myself, my ability, and I believe in my guys. Jaden's going off, picking up 50 yards on this play. In recent years, fullbacks haven't gotten no love. But my boy Logan, a different breed. I find him here wide open. He's going to muscle his way in for the touchdown. We take the lead. Just over a minute left. Fourth and three, game on the line. They send the house, rolling out to my right. And before I can get the ball off to my boy Shep, I get hit hard. We take a loss here week one. We're here in what's considered to be a guaranteed to win game, but I want more than that. I want a blowout, a real blowout. Against FCS East this week, I'm going to do it all. Red zone action with an option is king. I have no intentions on pitching this ball, muscling my way in, straight bully ball into the end zone. We take a two-score lead. This linebacker and safety, they blitz, go untouched. I'm running for my life, but as I get hit, delivering a straight-up dime to Will Shep for the 34-yard reception. Empty gun look here on first and 10. They only rush four. I got Gamarion in the end zone, open for the touchdown. We take a three-score lead. That first quarter did everything we set out to do to be the perfect example of dominance and here in the second looking to do more of the same and speaking of more of the same here in the red zone read option even if they didn't bite on the handoff i'll probably still take the ball bully my way in for it anyway touchdown all throughout camp i was calling my boy quincy sweet feet look at the way he catch this ball keep two feet in we in college my boy all you need is one in the shotgun play action slight roll out to my right off one foot got my boy gc in the end zone gamarion carter for touchdown number two at this point we're just getting greedy empty gun look nobody open taking off to my right just before i get hit going off script with my boy Jaden for a 60 yard reception a big time play from a big time player my vision for this game wholeheartedly and honestly was to dominate this first half to the point where i didn't even have to put my pads on for the second after the read option right here works perfectly on first and 10 it's looking like my vision is going to become a reality at half jogging back to the locker room coach let the starters know we're done the second unit is going to do what they got to do and put this on the bed last week's win was cute but now it's back to the grind conference play against the ranked opponent on the road we not falling short today Hearing the gun, third and inches, play action, surveying the field, taking off to my left, picking up the first down and some, making the guy miss, let's get it. We're only in week three, but we have yet to establish the run game. That's putting a lot more pressure on me and these receivers to make plays, but I'm up for the challenge. I'm going to step up to the plate. And more specifically, when it comes to the run game, our backs can't get going. But when it comes to me, I can take off at a moment's notice. Getting in the end zone, scoring myself, touchdown. We go up 10-0. A pivotal third and 12, dropping back, nobody's open, taking off, picking up the first and some, doing it all myself, damn near picking up 20 yards on this play. With a few of my main targets being covered all the way up the field we need some other guys to step up and right here this beautiful corner route from london is exactly what i'm asking for big 25 yard chunk play in the huddle i let everybody know we can't rely on the same one or two guys to make plays everybody else got to step up and contribute to this offense and justin ball hurt me loud and clear my tight end picks up a touchdown we up 17 nothing in the gun here on first and 10 expert protection up front actually with time to let my routes develop i got my boy quincy he picks up 45 putting us right in sc territory today it's a statement game to put the entire conference on notice we're no longer the stepping stool for the sec taking out to my right diving into the end zone for a touchdown we further our lead we got fourth quarter action sc's on the hunt but i refuse to be the hunted i'm gonna drop my head i'm the one applying pressure i'm picking up this first down letting them know i won't fold we coming out of here with this dub with my lead we've marched all the way down the field with a little bit of play action here on first and 10 connecting for a 24 yard touchdown to my number one guy is the definition of a successful drive and what i say a statement game defense made some plays we got the ball back in the red zone we find ourselves back Back in the end zone for another touchdown good night south carolina my stat line on the day video game like i went crazy but as a team we let them boys know yeah this ain't that with expectations for our team, our program rising after a huge win over South Carolina last week, a game against Georgia Southern is now seen as a must blowout game. We have to deliver. Every single week, my quarterback coach is on my head about bailing out of the pocket early. I got great protection up front, but it's just a bad habit I've developed ever since I came to college, period. But to me, it doesn't really make a difference. I always get the job done no matter what. Whether I bail out the run, pass, it doesn't matter. Taking off here on first and goal, picking up the touchdown on my legs. Third and eight, I'm sliding out to my left. I got my boy Shep over the top wide open. I do deliver a dime, he gets hit and 
it looks like a fumble, but after review, my boy ain't fumble. He was down by contact. And to top off an already fantastic drive, I got my boy 14 for a 14-yard touchdown reception. He did this drive all by himself. It's second and three. We're trying to cap off this first quarter in dominating fashion. Taking off to my right, outrunning everyone, getting into that end zone untouched for the touchdown. We go up 21 zip. Making a few adjustments at the line here in the gun, faking the handoff. This defensive end came in damn near untouched. I shed the block, take off to my left, picking up nearly 40 yards on this play, and we're back in the red zone. Down here in the red zone, running the read option. That just sounds like it's meant to be. And when I get all 240 pounds of my body going in full forward momentum, you can't stop me. Nobody can. First and 10 here, trying to put this game to bed before the second half so the second unit can come in and do what they do. I connect with my boy Quinn Skin. He gets the best of this corner, picking up the first and some. I truly believe my boy Jay Ball is one of the best tight ends in the country. His elite speed, his size, his hands, and ability to run routes is just unlike anything I've seen in a minute. Trying to put the cap on what I would deem a masterful first half. Looks like I got my fullback wide open in the end zone. Instead, it's one of the most oblivious picks I've ever thrown in my entire football career. The second unit is technically supposed to be taking over here in the second half, but if you think I'm finna walk out of here with a pick being my last play, you're crazy. I got my boy Jaden over the top for a perfect 50 yard bomb. Now we can check out of this game. My stat line on the day was nasty. Nearly 330 through the air, 151 on the ground, and five total touchdowns. And shout out to my boy Allen Wright on the defensive side of the ball. He did his thing too. As far as the Heisman watch goes, I'm the front runner, putting Vandy on the map and also letting everyone know I'm the best player in the nation. Didn't hear much from my boy London last week, but getting the ball to all of my playmakers, I mean everybody, is vital to our team's success. So I got to do it one way or another, some way, somehow. It's first and 10, run the play action. This defense bit hard, rolling out to my left slightly. And let me know when you find a quarterback who can deliver dots like this in the rain. As much as I want to get the ball to everyone eagerly, that's just not possible. Some guys are just better. Will is over here wide open, just seems to be unguardable at this point. Second and 10, dropping back to my right slightly, taking off. I got great blocks up front for my receivers, picking up 25 yards on the play, but getting body slammed by a DB. I ain't expect that. Throughout this first quarter, my offensive line has been sensational. Great protection up front. I connect with my boy JB putting this ball in a crazy tight window, picking up the first down. And at this point, it just seems like the good continues to get better. Dropping back to my left, even though all of the routes on the field are going to my right. And Will is wide open in the end zone with two DBs on this trail. He's just nasty. Honestly, we're underperforming here in the first half against UAB. Only up four points. We need to kick it up into that next gear that I know we're capable of. Under 20 seconds left here on third and goal. I'm gonna connect with my boy cam to pick up the touchdown to go up 11 but coming into the second half we're gonna be a new team trust me we came out here in the third quarter moving kind of slow with little to no momentum but we get some of that back here on third and two as i connect with Jaden for damn near 30 yards a scoreless third quarter is not what i expected we couldn't get it done through the air on the ground but here on first and 10 to kick out the fourth quarter i'm taking out to my right out running this entire defense flipping into the end zone that's how you step up and ball and speaking of how you ball i connect with my boy justin ball here on second and 10 in the end zone for another touchdown not the blowout i wanted but a blowout in Indeed, we walk out of here with a W. After a dominating win, we find ourselves ranked number 23 in the nation. Hopping back into conference play this week, we can definitely find ourselves moving up the ranks again. This is easily the toughest defense we've faced so far this season. Undefeated Mizzou, this is a big time game. Under center here on first and 10, rolling out to my right, taking off, muscling my way through guys, picking up the first down, 19 yards on this play. Mizzou's secondary has been trying to lock things down, but one thing they can't stop is me. Third and one, taking off, one guy standing between me and the touchdown, I try to go over top, and somehow I'm marked short. After coming down crazy on that play, I had to head to the sideline to get some extra tape on my ankle, and then coach had the audacity to look at me and ask that I want to check back in. I looked at him crazy, is that a real question? Under Center here on first and 10, got to quiet the home crowd a little bit, dropping back, sitting in the pocket, comfortably connecting with my main man for a 22 yard snag. Dropping back, surveying the field, rolling out to my left a bit, and as soon as I get in trouble, my God, Justin Ball is wide open to pick up the big play, 27 at that. Haven't had much of a connection with my wide receiver three these last couple of weeks, but I got my boy London in the end zone open for a touchdown to take the lead. First half is coming to an end, we're trying to go into that locker room with a two score lead. I'm gonna do everything I can to lead my guys into that end zone, we gotta get it done. In the gun here on first and 10, dropping back and Anytime I call on my dog, Jay Ball, he's going to answer every single time. We secure the two-score lead going into the second half. This third and fourth quarter, crucial. It's not always about how you start. We started well. It's about how you finish. We got to see it through. With our foot on their necks, applying straight pressure. I'm going to connect with Will here on second and 11. He's going to play bully ball, running through this defensive back, getting into the end zone. We go up three scores. A demoralizing win this week in conference play over an undefeated Mizzou team. We stepped up and balled out against one of the better defenses we're going to face all season. That's how you 
you ball. That's how you play. That's how you execute. After getting ranked just last week, we go from number 23 to the top 20, and we're currently sitting at 5 and 1. 72 yards shy of 2,000 passing yards on the season, but Will Rogers with 2,400 closing in on 25 is absolutely insane. He's in a world of his own right now. Just last year, this Georgia team, national champions, currently ranked as the number 8 team in the nation. Getting the win today will be monumental for this school. It's first and 10, making some adjustments at the line based on what I see, putting this ball in a bucket to my boy Quincy, putting us in the red zone. I'm understanding individually what my guy specialize in and in these short distance situations london is my go-to first and 10 dropping back as deep as i could possibly go to extend this play and off script is my boy Jaden up the field open for an explosive 50 yard play first and 10 empty gun look gotta quiet the home crowd a little bit and if it's not gonna be london it's justin they both find a way to get loose here in the red zone some way somehow i love it second and two play action surveying the field nobody's open now i scramble to my left i shed one tackle i pull off a crazy spin move but i get so hard going out of bounds i fumble back in the red zone with another Another chance to take the lead before going into the second half and who else justin ball for his second touchdown of the day that boy is balling in every game we've played so far in that second half i become a different beast trying to convert here on third and 18 i'm taking off to my right i violate multiple defenders here in traffic taking off to the end zone untouched diving in that's what i call a true heisman moment in the gun here on first and 10 an unexpected cornerback blitz taking off with him hot on my trail off one foot up the sideline perfect accuracy to my boy quincy picking up 32 yards i'm a different breed back here for yet another trip in the red zone third and three dropping back in the gun i got my boy Jaden in the back of the end zone wide open completely uncovered after the day we're definitely gonna wake up anybody that's still sleeping on us as a team offensively we straight up dominated one of the if not the best defense in all of college football a and m sitting at four and three is crazy but it's a conference game we got to come out here to ball here on second and 12 there's no better way to start a game than an 85 yard catch and run to my boy london for a huge touchdown tie game here in the gun on third and five i'm gonna connect with quincy right across the middle picking up 30 on this play being a dual threat quarterback especially in the sec always plays out to my advantage you got to respect my arm you have no choice but i'm just as deadly with my leg second and 10 back in the gun dropping back with forever and a day to get rid of this ball and just as i'm about to get sacked i got london up the numbers for a huge play putting us over the 50. We typically end our halves off on a strong note here on second and goal. Nothing's going to change. We're going to take off to the right, drop my shoulder, roll into the end zone. We take the lead. Not the greatest start to the second half, but once I begin to connect with a few of my other big time playmakers, we can really gain that momentum and take over this game. Now a hefty third and 26, dropping back extreme pressure in my face, taking off to my right. I miss wheel wide open because I don't want to make a terrible pass, but at this point, I'm just heaving it out there. JB's out there somewhere. He picks up 31 yards on the play, taking a snap from the gun here on first and 10 and the wide side of the field is completely vacant taking off going untouched diving in to take the two score lead the back end of the third and the entire fourth quarter this a m defense had a strap we couldn't move the ball to save our lives now i gotta go down here lead my team to a miracle game winning drive under 40 seconds left all three timeouts play action i told jb i need you boy this is your time to shine make a name for yourself and i connect on my dog picking up the first down and he gets out of bounds it's first and 10 we're nearly in field goal range and even though i got a few guys open i don't want to take the risk what Whatsoever. I'm taking off myself, picking up the first sliding down. Let's get it. The game is in the hands, or should I say the foot of our kicker, Jacob Borsilia, who just barely nails this field goal to send us home with the win. 320 yards passing, four total touchdowns, and I let my guys down the field to put us in field goal range to walk out of here with the W. That's how you do it. Growing up, even though I'm from Texas, I was a huge Gator fan. Pretty much my dream school. And to be here in the packed out swamp playing against them, this means a lot to me. Second and three here in the gun, we got play action. Connecting with my boy Quincy to pick up the easy first down. Now here, under center, they got eight in the box. They finna send the house at me, but with great protection up front and me rolling out to my left, I got my boy JB, Mr. Always Available, wide open for the touchdown. My big guys up front are doing a fantastic job holding their own against this ferocious defensive line. Slightly rolling out to my right, connecting with Jaden, picking up the first down. Back in the Gator territory in the gun play action the name you haven't heard much my boy pat smith breaking off his route going up field wide open picking up a huge play putting us back in the red zone so far this season we've ran through just about every good team in the sec besides bama but my guys in blue and orange they're no different we got to come out here we got to eat as for our defense them boys came to play keeping the top 20 ranked team scoreless throughout the first quarter is absolutely insane i love to see it let's get it it's first and goal and these fans got the swamp rocking but i'm not easily rattled dropping back to my right and on cue is my boy j mac for the tug clock still 
still running all three timeouts and we're still in kill mode. And over the top, I got the speeds to my dog, Jaden, for a 53-yard catch and run to take a four-score lead up 28 nothing at the half. Been carving them up through the air the entire day. My guys have done a great job getting open. So I think it's about time I remind them that I am a true dual threat, getting loose with my legs, picking up a huge first down. Third and 10, dropping back, rolling out to my right. And if this DB was conscious of where this ball was at, this probably would have been a pick. But shout out to my boy JB for making this huge 48-yard catch. Back here in the red zone at the end of the third quarter, trying to put a cap on an already dominating win, rolling out to my right, taking off untouched, diving into the end zone. I get up letting everybody know in this stadium this game is over. More conference play this week at the crib against one of the worst of teams in the conference, but definitely a team you cannot sleep on. First and 10, under center, play action, heavy rollout to my left, on the run with a perfect dot to my boy London for the big 34-yard reception. One of the slowest starts to a game we've ever had, a very uneventful first quarter on our part. We just got to take what the defense gives us at this point. But a scoreless first quarter, that's not an option. Read option from 32 yards out, putting a move on the DB, taking this one all the way into the end zone for the touchdown. Let's get it. All right, now, second half, it's time to do what we do best, cook up, turn up the heat. Got my boy Jaden here on first and 10, picking up 19. We got red zone action, first and goal, making a few adjustments at the line. And the wide side of the field is just there. Free real estate, taking off end zone, touchdown. Here on third and eight with the intentions to turn our two score lead into three, dropping back in the gun. I got my boy JB, and I don't know how he didn't turn this one up into the end zone. And now down here on the one yard line, there's an assault on God's green earth who's going to stop me from getting into that end zone. Okay, you got some fight in him. Here on second and 10, play action, dropping a dime to my boy Jaden. I kind of set him up here, but he does hold on to the ball. First and 10, dropping back in a name you haven't heard much of who's supposed to be my number one receiver my boy will shep with a beautiful toe tapping touchdown one our defense took the day off or two kentucky really came to ball today here on first and ten taking off to my right picking up the first down and some we got to get in and lock down this win clock still running play action you know exactly who's going to be open that boy runs a filthy route jb for the touchdown watching the final play from the sideline devin leary is going to launch this one up feeling if our guy wasn't in position this probably would have been a touchdown we barely survived kentucky the only 10 I see is us being ranked number 10 in the entire nation. I connect with my boy Shep here on first and 10. Back here in the gun, surveying the field, nothing but free real estate open to my right. Taking off, getting to the end zone for a 24-yard scamper, touchdown. Under center here on first and 10, play action. With our receivers crossing paths and a bunch of DBs in the area, I don't know where Buddy came from, but if you're going to catch a pick on me, you're definitely going to pay the price. Now back here on first and 10 after throwing a terrible pick. At this point, I don't even want to put the ball in the air. I want to impose my will by running the ball because I know nobody can't stop me. And we're Right around the country is my boy Shep done took a back seat. He's no longer that guy. He's not the number one receiver, but he has something else to say this week against Tennessee over the top for a big time touchdown. Second and two, dropping back. I got a few guys out there, but that pick has really scarred me. Taking off, picking up the first down and some. Let's get it. Now here in the red zone, second and goal, surveying the field, knowing good and well I have no intentions on passing this ball. Taking off, big boy thought he had an angle. You're too slow, my guy. It's too much speed. It's late here in the third quarter, and I have to do everything I possibly can to reinsert my dominance, regain my confidence, but most most importantly, lead us to a conference win. Now it's the fourth quarter. Close game. This is where it all matters. Connecting with my boy Shep, picking up the first. Let's move them chains. First and goal, and with every single route being covered, not a soul open on this field. I'm going to take off and do what I've been doing all day, dominating in the run game, getting into the end zone untouched to further our lead. Now with the chance to put this game away here on first and 10, play action, dropping back, rolling out to my right. Got my boy Shep wide open down the field. He's going to walk in and take us home with a W. 266 through the air, 100 plus on the ground, five total touchdowns. Yeah, that's how you ball on the road. Black and gold on black and gold crime. Dropping back here deep on first and 10. Connecting with my boy Jaden. I thought I set him up for the kill, but that DB ain't hitting like that. He on first and goal. And at this point, that play action is just as powerful as the read option. Once I fake that handoff, I got free will to do whatever I want. Taking off to my right, touchdown. Back here in the red zone on first and goal. Under center, dropping back. Got a beautiful route from my boy Jay. Picking up a touchdown. We take a two score lead. Hey, I'm not going to lie. It's packed out at the crib today. This home crowd is extremely loud, but you know the drill. Play action, roll out to my right off one foot. Beautiful. Beautiful dime to my boy London H for the touchdown. We up three scores just in the first quarter. Empty gun look here on first and 10. And as soon as I roll out, I see my boy Shep in the flats open just a little bit too late. But on the bright side, I do pick up the first down. It's kind of wild. The second quarter alone, our three score lead quickly turned into win. That way for his offense is starting to move that rock. But so are we. We're going to get into the end zone before the half ends. Trust me. And that perfection I spoke of before the half, absolutely impossible. I take a terrible sack and safety here on first and 10. I should have just handed the ball off. With the third quarter coming to an end, play 
action here on first and 10. I connect with my boy Justin in stride. He turns his up the sideline and straight up man handles their secondary. We have the lead, but we got to keep our foot on their necks. Read option down here in the red zone is cake. And I don't care what you say. This DB got away with a cheap late hit. With plenty of time left in the fourth, per usual, we do have the lead. But this game is not out of reach. But when I need a game-breaking play, I'm going to call on that number one. Big Shep for the huge play. Second and 10 under center, taking the snap play action. I don't know how many touchdowns my dog got on the season. But at this point, he might be top five for the Belitnikoff touchdown London Humphreys. Don't get me wrong. I trust our defense. But going for two right now is the smarter option just in case they score. And I get an opportunity here off the read option to completely flatline the DB. If you would have told me in the beginning of this season that we'd be number five in the nation, 11 and one competing in the SEC championship game, I believe you. Me and the guys work hard. We bust our tails for this opportunity. But against Bama, hands down, the toughest defense we've faced all season. One of the toughest defenses in all of college football. They coming at me full speed. They ain't letting up. A scoreless first quarter. Both defenses came to play a straight up defensive battle. But some way, somehow, we got to find a way to get it done. First and 10, taking the snap, dropping back. And it's like a horror scene in front of me. Two humongous defensive linemen coming at me full speed delivering a straight up dime off my back foot to my boy jb for 35 first and 10 empty gun looking completely unexpected a cornerback blitz and not only does he get the strip sack but they scoop and he takes it all the way back to the crib for the score they strike first this defense is like nothing i've ever seen before and i've said this multiple times throughout the season but this is a true statement game how we respond as a team is season defining down here in the red zone for the first time in this entire half taking the snap and i got my boy shep my number one receiver in the end zone for the touchdown let's get it third and inches currently down one score here in the third quarter and with this defense having everything across the field strapped i'm gonna use my god-given ability to get up the field and get down before i get clapped it's fourth quarter and we all know what kind of beast i turned into in that fourth quarter and i don't care who we playing bama spammer damn i don't give a damn i'm turning up i'm going crazy let's lock in made our way back into the red zone and here on first and goal in the back of the end zone is my boy london hum for the touchdown we tied this game let's go bama went down and only put up three now is our chance to get down get in the end zone and really sway this game in our favor and I'm going to do that any way possible through the air on the ground no matter what it takes is getting done. Second and 10 in the gun, play action, dropping back so deep. If I take this sack, this can be game altering. But as I'm getting hit, you talk about the dime of all dimes to my boy William Shepard for the touchdown. And as expected, Bama responded. Now down 1.19 seconds left on the clock with all three timeouts. We got to make it happen. This is it. In the huddle, I had to let my guys know, calm down. It's our time. This is our moment. We're built for this. We work for this. I got my boy JB across the middle picking up the first down. Jacob or Seal an opportunity to put this game away and become a legend here in the SEC championship. They take the snap. The kick is up. Me and the guys this season, we defeated all odds, overcame every expectation, every limitation that was set on us at the beginning of the season. But we fell just short to a very well coached, very dominant Bama team. Coming in from Memphis to the worst team in the SEC, nobody thought we would compete as a team and nobody thought I would win the Heisman Trophy. But now I'm left with a decision. Do I return for my senior season to dominate? Or do I go take my chances in the league? After moving heaven and earth to secure the number three pick in the draft, the Titans chose me to come in as the day one starter and take over this franchise. And here in my NFL debut, I'm going to face off against a veteran quarterback in Derek Carr and the New Orleans Saints. Taking the snap here in the gun on first and 10, great protection up front, delivering a straight up dot to a wide open Chris Moore. Coming into the league, I thought I would be advised to not take off and run with the ball as much, but it's been a complete opposite. My coaches actually encourage it when things aren't looking right up the field. And after hearing that, I'm like, say less. Play action boot, running to my left, outrunning a DN, diving into the end zone for my first NFL career touchdown. And with every route on the field going to my left, the right side of the field just seems to be vacant. I'm going to take advantage of it. Peeling off, picking up the first down and some. I got NFL DBs looking silly out here. Crazy enough, even though I balled out in college, they exceeded all expectations. Won the Heisman Trophy, the whole nine. Some scouts and anonymous coaches still found a way to downplay my skill set coming into the draft. I mean, I heard it all. My arm talent went and transferred to the league. I wasn't smart enough to read the NFL defense. Some even felt like I was mistake prone. And by the time I finished my rookie season, I'd have at least 20 picks. So yeah, I was the third pick in the draft, and that usually comes with a lot of pressure to play well. But now I've developed somewhat of a chip on my shoulder, and I'm out to prove everybody who doubted me wrong. Now here in the fourth quarter, damn near backed up into our own end zone with the biggest hole in front of me leading down the middle of the field. I'm taking off, picking up the first, and sliding down before I take a hit from the honey badger. Taking a snap in the center, rolling out to my right. I'm thinking about taking off, but instead on the move, it's straight up dot to my boy Traylon Burks picking up the first and some. And he picked up a flag on the play. Trying to seal this game up, making our way downfield here on second and 12. 
play action coming to my right a bit. I got my tight end a conquer on the sideline for an amazing catch and a touchdown. And my NFL debut couldn't have gone any better. Over 230 through the air with two touchdowns, a buck 52 on the ground with another. I went crazy. I think it's safe to say I've arrived. Not gonna lie, the entire first quarter, I couldn't make nothing shake against this Chargers defense. But me and my boy Trey Burke, we gonna kick this second quarter off the right way with a bang touchdown. We're still trailing by 10 and this defense is not letting up, but I won't fold. I refuse to. Rolling out to my right at straight up down to my boy Trey B. We got a great connection. One and a half yards for making our way into the end zone. Play action rolling out. I got my dominant tight end the Conquo for the touchdown. Our score goes up. Chargers go down to score again. Games like this, an uphill battle from start to finish are what defines your career. How well can I fight under pressure? And in times like this, when we need our true playmakers to show up and pop out, they do exactly that. I got my boy D-Hop with an amazing catch to put us in the red zone. And yeah, the Chargers may have won that first half, hands down. But the second is ours. Chris Moore for the touchdown. Let's go. We got a chance to put the ball in the end zone, take a one-point lead. Now I finally figured out this defense. I'm moving the ball up the field, no problem. On the 12-yard line, in the gun, I take the snap, and right in front of me, I see a huge hole and opportunity. I take off, and from damn near five yards out, I'm diving into the end zone for the touchdown. We take the lead. And with no hesitation, the Chargers take that lead right back. Now I have to take my guys and fight 73 yards up the field to at least have a chance at tying this game up. And just like that, with 23 seconds to spare, we're on the two. From the gun, I take the snap. Wide open is Chris Moore. Busted coverage. We got a touchdown and a tie game on our hands. Instead of kicking the easy field goal, we went for two. Put Derrick Henry in the Wildcat thinking he was just going to bulldoze his way in. That Chargers defense was not having it. And just like that, we take a one-point loss at home. We could have been in overtime. But trust, we're going to win this week. Nothing is on my mind here in a packed out Brown Stadium other than win. Win this game. Dominate. Back in college, anytime I would scramble, I would drop my shoulder against any and everybody to deliver the punishment myself. But here in the league, these boys hitting a little different. I'm sliding with no hesitation. On the goal line here on first and goal. And when you have the most feared running back in the entire league on your team, it makes the read option so much fun. A free walk in or should I say dive in touchdown. Second and pretty long play action boot away from Miles Garrett. Thrown on the run just before I'm about to get hit. A straight up dime. I'm picking up the first. We got to convert here on third down. I got my dog open in the flats, but I'm going to do this with myself. Damn this shaking Denzel Ward out his shoes, picking up the first and some. Now here on the four yard line, empty gun look, all my guys split wide. And yet again, my offensive line going crazy with the blocking up front. Nothing but a big hole and opportunity touchdown. I've been destroying this defense all day with my legs. Now it's time to sit back, deliver some dots, put the cherry on top and carve them up through the air. Play action from the gun. Everything is clean up front, but I'm still taking off to my left. Me and my boy Trey so synced up. We make great plays like this look scripted under center taking the snap and you gotta love these pa boots while everybody in the stadium thought i was gonna run easy dime to my boy a5 and in dominating fashion we straight up buried the browns but i have nothing but respect and love for their organization a lot of great guys and players on this team they got a pretty good group moving forward leading up to this game this week against cincy all i've heard this entire week was that i won't be able to compete with joe burrow he's gonna completely outplay me and i just sat back and thought to myself Challenge accepted. Got the snap from the gun here on first and 10. And while everything upfield is sewn up, that right side of the field is just screaming, calling my name, wide open real estate, taking off, picking up 37 on the play. We on the four. Play action might have saved me from getting destroyed by two linebackers coming in unblocked, but on the run, a straight dot to my dog, D-Hop, for the touchdown. We strike first. Even though the media has made this game personal for me, I let the entire team know, especially our defense, this ain't a regular game. We have to protect home turf. But with all the firepower that the Bengals have in their offense between Higgins, Bull, Boys, Jamar Chase and Joe Burrow himself, Joe Mixon. That's a lot. That's a huge ass for my defense, but I believe in my guy. Now from the gun, here on the nine, taking the snap, and right in front of me, I see nothing but space and opportunity. Taking off, leafing my way into the end zone untouched. I'm applying nothing but straight pressure today. Back in college, I would always scramble. You couldn't pay me to sit in the pocket and deliver dimes, but now that I do get paid the big bucks to throw the ball from the pocket, I'm going to sit here comfortably. I got trust in my O-line. Now down here on the one, from the gun, with three receivers split wide to my left, I completely misread the read option but a poor tackle attempt and little to no effort from a cornerback, I'm in the end zone doing a stanky leg. Coming into the league, I knew these defenses would be done like anything I've ever seen in college. I got to get rid of the ball quick. I revamp my throwing motion. Now I get rid of the ball in the blink of an eye. Just a straight up flick, effortless. It's third and goal. Taking a snap from the empty gun, rolling out to my right, giving the illusion that I'm going to walk this one in myself. This corner draws down, leaves Trey wide open in the end zone. Now here in the fourth quarter, the Bengals actually went down and scored, but it won't do them no good. I'm on a mission to straight up destroy, dismantle, embarrass their defense. They're going to be talking about this run all week. I just pulled off something crazy. And to put these boys down officially for the count, play action boot to my right, you know what time it is. 
now down here in Indy against a very talented defensive front. And I'm matching up against fellow rookie quarterback Anthony Richardson, a matchup everybody's been talking about and looking forward to. Taking a snap here on third and two, very comfortable, but a clean pocket allows me to deliver dots like this to my boy Oconquo for the tub. This time around, we're backed all the way up into the shade. With a lot of pressure coming in from my right, I thought about bailing, but instead I step up in the pocket, deliver a straight dime up the field, 74 yards to the crib, TB for the touchdown. Our defense went and got another great stop. Now with another chance to get down here into the end zone, I'm going to pick apart this defense every way possible. Second and extremely long, dropping back deep. And who do I have upfield? My number one guy. And when it's all said and done, me and Trey might emerge as the breakout duo of the season. We keep balling like this. And when you straight up destroy your defense, just carve them up the way that we do, it makes easy work for your running back. Good thing we have not only a running back, the running back. King Henry walks this one in himself. Now here in the fourth quarter, this is when you got to channel your inner beast and really turn things up a notch, whether you got to lead or not. Rolling out to my right, I get back deep. And I'm glad I did. This would have been an ugly sack, but instead, I'm delivering a dot. At this point, dominance is a standard for both sides of the ball. We stepped up and played a complete game as a team, and we're probably going to walk out of Indy in blowout fashion. My stats so far through six games are going crazy. Over 1,000 through the air, 11 touchdowns, two measly picks, and on the ground, nearly 500 with another seven. Starting off this season hot. Today, we face off against one of the toughest defenses we'll go against all season. But personally, I get to go head-to-head -head with a quarterback I've looked up to all throughout high school and college. Model my game after. Down 10-0. Being shut out damn near an entire first half. I gotta make some shake. This defense right here, a real test. Do or die situation. Four guys split wide. Empty gun to try to spread this defense out a bit and it works out to perfection. Walk-in touchdown. We score before the half. One of my missions and overall goals as a quarterback in this league and a future captain leader of of this team is to never play a bad football game. One bad half is one thing, but the second, we gotta own it. A little RPO action here on first and 10, and with these boys coming in full steam ahead, it's an easy swing out to my boy Chris Moore, picking up the first down. It's still early in the season and my career, but I'm starting to develop a really good sense for the game, knowing who and what to look for in certain situations, and in short distance, my tight end is starting to become my go-to. With us having the lead here in the fourth quarter, we gotta step up, execute, and finish this game. We all know Lamar is known for stepping up in these big moments, and I wanna do the same, and some. Dropping back here on second and five i've been showing this defense that i'm a real threat with my arm and i finally catch them slipping taking out to my left up the field full sprint i pick up 40 plus on the play we got red zone action we got an empty gun look here on third and goal on the one yard line with a chance to put this game away and who else rolling out to my right am i gonna find my number one guy when it comes to these situations bigger conquo for the touchdown a statement game a statement win putting the league on notice that i can compete with any quarterback in the league and against the best defenses in the league as well Backed up on our own 12-yard line here on third and four. I'm going to take off to my right, pick the first up myself, and toss the defender in the process. After outplaying two of the best young quarterbacks in the entire NFL, a lot of the haters and naysayers to start the season are starting to go back on their words. Everything they said I couldn't do, I'm doing it at an elite level. I have the most touchdowns of any player in the entire league and amongst quarterbacks that have the least amount of picks. But we're still just under halfway through the season. I still have so much more football to play, so much more to prove, and I know they're waiting for me to slip up. I'm going to do everything I can to help myself and this team get better. We got to continue on this pace. Two whole quarters without touching the end zone. So far, this defense has had our number. But this second half, we got to turn it up, especially in front of a home crowd. With the third quarter coming to an end, now it's time to really turn things up. We got to just take what the defense give us. I've been looking for the big play all game, and my guys upfield just can't get open. Probably not a surprise to the defense, but here on first and 10, we're going to run the ball. And from the 14, read option, do a great job selling the handoff around the edge into the end zone for the touchdown. We now have the lead. For anybody who's following me through college, they all know in that fourth quarter, I go into a completely different mode. Execution at an all time high this is where i shine second and goal on the three from the gun they're sending the house at me but with nobody to guard my number one red zone threat that's a foolish act we could kick the field goal and just take a knee whatever and get this game over with but instead we're gonna put another one up there's not a team in this league who's gonna hold us under 20 points this season Today, I got to deal with a ferocious Steelers defense. TJ Watt, Cam Haywood up front, Minka Fitzpatrick are old but much respected Pat Pete on the back end. But one thing about it, when the level of competition rises, so does my play. And we're on the roll, yeah, these are my favorite type of games. Been trying to establish a connection with all my guys, whether you're a starter, fourth guy on the depth chart, it does not matter. But a name you haven't heard or seen much this season so far, Josh Reynolds with a huge catch and run for a touchdown. With only a four point lead here early in the second quarter, taking the snap back here in the gun, dropping back to my right. I got Cam Hayward trying to come in 
and get his first sack of the game, but instead I'm off one foot and find my boy Trey B up the field. Another second down situation, everything upfield is sewn up, so I'm taking off to my right. With Cam Haywood on my trail, I got Minka coming in from an angle. We just collide. He makes the touchdown saving play. Read option in the red zone, they're going to bite every single time. It never fails. Skipping my way into the end zone, untouched for the touchdown, we further our lead. These last couple of weeks, I've been hanging out in the pocket, delivering dimes out here playing like I'm prime Brady, but today I'm reminding these boys I'm a true dual threat. I can get it done either way. I'm not sure what it is, but we play so much better when we're on the road. If we can be this efficient at home, I don't see us losing another game. Second and goal from the three, and I'm pretty sure I fooled nobody with this play action, but rolling out to my right or walk in touchdown, I'll take that any day. The very definition, the epitome of what a dual threat quarterback is. Over 200 yards through the air with two touchdowns, a buck 20 on the ground with another two, that's four total. That's how you ball. And this week against the Bucks, it don't get no easier. A really solid defense. They might not have Brady on the offensive side, but this is still not a team I'm going to sleep on. Their secondary, solid, but this defensive front is pretty insane. So I got to get it done any way I possibly can. Taking off here on first and 10, picking up the first and some, we got to make our way down the field. A must get it done, third and nine situation. Taking this snap in the gun, I'm looking for trailing across the middle, but instead I'm throwing a terrible pick. Yet another game with a scoreless first half. And that dog that usually comes out of me late in the fourth quarter has to make an appearance early here in the third. I can't under the pressure. Play action here from the gun on first and 10. They're dropping back in coverage, but when I need a big play, I know I can call on Trey. Big 16 for the touchdown. We up now. Trying to pick apart this defense is difficult. They don't have any weaknesses anywhere. Up front, linebackers, secondary, but they do make mistakes. They're not perfect. I just have to take advantage of the opportunities when they present themselves. Playing these bad halves of football are going to kill us slowly in the end, especially against some of these more high-powered offenses. As much as I trust our defense, we got to step up and produce as well. Yet another crucial third down situation. Taking the snap in the gun dropping back and I bail out of the pocket just a little bit too early with the DN in my face off one foot they're gonna be playing this play on ESPN all week long defense do a fantastic job holding Tampa to only three now with a chance to actually seal this game off I'm gonna do everything I possibly can to move the chains Tampa's had the run game on lock all game but here on first and 10 28 yards out King Henry got something to say about that all the way to the crib we put the bucks down this week, I go head to head, toe to toe with yet another young, talented quarterback in this league who gets a lot of love and praise, which he actually should. I take every single game I've ever played personal, but when I'm up against a guy they said I wouldn't be better than and my career couldn't even compare to his down the road, I take it to a whole nother level. First and 10, taking a snap from the gun, and who would have thought Derrick Henry would be so explosive catching the ball out of the backfield? He does a great job getting in the open space, making catches. He does it all. Down here in the red zone, we got a little PA boot action, rolling out to my right in a full sprint. I got my dog, D Hop, for the touchdown. Second and long from the gun, I get blasted trying to deliver this ball, but it gets where it needs to be on time with accuracy. Empty gun look with five receivers split wide. Nobody's open, no problem. I avoid the sack, get up field, get the first down, and I slide. We got a pretty solid lead coming into the second half, but I want to do a little more. Turn things up a notch, demoralize this team. First and 10 to my right, I have nothing but space and opportunity, but I got my guy up field, and he got some space. I want to give him a chance to make a big play. Third and goal in the gun on the two-yard line, and the only guy I know in the league who's this open, this consistently in these type of situations, my tight end, Conquo, is a dog. It's the end of the third quarter, and this game is a straight up blowout. This crowd is packed out, but they're quiet. But our foot is still in the gas. We gotta finish these boys off. To my right, I got my guys in that bunch formation, which will always create confusion. And up field in the end zone, I got my dog, D Hop, who this season I feel like he'll prove that he's still one of the best receivers in the league. Hands down, my most consistent game through the air I've ever played in my life. Only two, only two incompletions throughout the whole day, and on the ground, I did what I always do. Back at the crib this week against a defense that you really cannot sleep on. One of the more underrated teams in the league. Offensively, they don't have as much firepower, but you cannot sleep on these guys. A lot of people are confused on why I roll out so much with a clean pocket. With every route on the field coming to my right side, I'm going to go there. It makes it a lot easier to deliver dots on the run for my guys and make bigger plays. And when I'm already rolling out to my left or right side and I have that type of momentum, it makes it a lot easier for me to take off for the run and walk in for a touchdown. High stepping my way in here on first and goal. But don't get it twisted. I can hang out in the pocket and throw dimes all day if I wanted to. I trust my old line here in the league way more than I did any time in college. And like I said to begin with, this defense is nothing to be played with. A tie game at 7-7 to in the fourth quarter. Hands down our slowest day offensively we've had all season. But after taking our first arrow earlier this season at home, I told myself we'll never lose another home game. And I'm going to hold myself to that. First and goal from the 7, taking the snap under center, rolling out to my right. D-tackle on my trail, but I feel no pressure. D-hop in the back of the end zone for the win. And crazy enough, Carolina actually went down the score, but they made the same mistake we made earlier this season by going for two defense held up that's a dub
empty gun look. I'm standing on my own goal line, taking the snap, backing up into my own end zone, delivering a dime across the middle. Second and very long, dropping back in the gun, connecting with who I would say is my number one receiver and to everyone's surprise, including myself, isn't D-Hop, but trailing Burt. First and 10, down here in the red zone. The big boys up front came to get me on this one, but as I get hit, delivering a strike to my tight end too. A tie game here to start the second quarter, throwing this ball right over the linebacker's head. If I didn't throw it as quick as I did, this probably would have been a pick. He always gets it done in short distance, but even here, across the middle, catch and run, picking up big yardage. I got one of the most explosive tight ends in the league right now. Surprisingly, here on second and nine, my tight end one is actually blocking, but my tight end two running a filthy corner route, making a great catch, keeping both of his feet in bounds. We take the lead. Defense went and got a crucial stop. Just under two minutes left here in the first half, we got a chance to go increase our lead even more to really take over this game. So far this season, we've gotten so much better when it comes to clock management, picking apart the defense, taking what they give us, getting out of bounds when we need to, just better across the board. And catching the defense by complete surprise, a screen to DH who's going to walk into the end zone untouched 21 to 7 going into the second half offensively we get so much credit on how well we're playing this season but our defense don't get nowhere near enough love they're playing and competing on an entirely different level empty gun look here on third and long trying our best to keep the drive alive we're gonna pick up the first down after i squeeze this ball into an insanely tight window a pivoting third and goal situation a clean pocket nonetheless but i bail out a little early making this throw way more difficult than it had to be but once again my tight end to the rescue a dot in the end zone for the second time this season i go head to head with fellow rookie quarterback anthony Richardson and for the second consecutive time I think it's safe to say on the ground and through the air I win this matchup our defense has been phenomenal so far this season, but this week, the most explosive offense in the entire NFL is going to be a real challenge. A challenge for our defense? Definitely. But offensively, it's a challenge for us as well. If they turn up the heat and they really start scoring and moving that ball, we got to match everything they do, if not better, to win this game. Second and goal, the second I see this safety blitz be picked up by one of my big guys up front, I knew it was safe for me to roll out and deliver a straight up dot to my boy Josh Reynolds. Defense went and got a great stop. Now with a chance to make our way up the field and get into the end zone and take the lead, my boy Josh Reynolds came to play today. I don't know how, but did I forget to mention that we're going against one of the better cornerback duos in the league and Ramsey and Howard. Let's go for the touchdown. Some third and five action. Nobody open, no problem. Taking off, I barely get the edge on these defenders, but when I do, kicking up straight dirt, picking up over 30 yards on this play, let's get it. If I had a dollar for every time I ran a play action boot, I'd be making double my rookie salary, but can you blame us? The execution is just perfect. And now that we've made our way down to the red zone on the five yard line, I'm gonna hand it off to the king who's gonna cut it back behind this block and walk it in for the touchdown. And our defense continues to Press, putting us in some fantastic field position right back on the four and once again pa boot for the win we got houston at the crib but here on second and seven i got a few options upfield but instead i'm gonna take advantage of this free real estate i got to my right picking up the first down from the gun sitting comfortably in the pocket nothing but time and my guys are getting open in a timely manner if we can keep this up today's gonna be fantastic it's third and goal from the gun the second i spot d hot wide open the cornerback blitz takes me by surprise i gotta tuck this one to avoid a fumble a pretty ugly first quarter but we're looking here to come out in the second and play better football and i personally have to get rid of the ball in a timely manner with this type of blocking up front i can take a nap in the pocket get up and throw the ball whenever I feel like it. We pick up the first down here on third and eight. Red zone action down here on the 10. Usually in these type of situations, the read option will be my best friend, but these play action boots just does not fail. I haven't been taking off with the ball as much lately. I've been trying to establish myself as a true throw of the football here in the league, but when I do take off, it makes it a lot easier. It catches everybody by surprise. It's first and goal. I'm thinking about taking off. I see an insane block up front, but I second guess myself. I turn around, run back out, and on the move, a diving catch from my number one receiver. That was a nasty ESPN top five, top number one play of the week. From being honest though, this Texas defense has been solid all day. We haven't put up as many points through three quarters as we usually do, but we're gonna move that ball nonetheless. And a promise I vowed to keep, at least to myself, no team, no defense more specifically would keep us from scoring at least 20 points this season. And DH right here on first and 10 made sure of that. Seattle came in our house this week, scored the first touchdown. I don't like that at all. Then they got some studs on that back end. We gotta be careful and execute flawlessly this week. But a bonus factor with how well my offensive line has been playing is gonna give me and all of my weapons time to let plays develop and we can really execute things to the best of our ability and just like that we marched our way down the field down here on the seven hanging out back in the pocket chilling having a good old time marvelous time by myself delivering a dot to d hop in the end zone for the touchdown a pretty rough quarter two scoreless on our end seattle has the lead but now it's time to turn it up a notch second half play we gotta go crazy i might even have to gamble a bit and test that secondary from the gun here on first and ten dropping back way too deep somehow i evade the sack and on the run delivering a perfect dot to pick up the first down play action from the 
the gun. I sold this one so well, it might have saved me from getting a sack. Rolling out to my right, dotting my main man for the touchdown. It's a tie game here late in the third. Now it's time for me to step up and do what I'm supposed to do if I want to be a great quarterback in this league. Put my team on my back, march our way down the field, and take this lead. Under 10 seconds left in the third quarter, back in the red zone on first and goal, dropping back with plenty of time to let these routes develop, putting a little extra mustard on this ball, but that's no problem for my dog, Josh Reynolds. We take the lead. That back end of the third, now coming into the fourth quarter, our defense decided to completely shut down Seattle's offense. Now it's time for us to do what we do best. And one of my favorite sayings ever in the history of sayings, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. P-A-B-O-O-T for the W-I-N. Today, a showdown with a veteran quarterback who I have much love and respect for. Shout out to Geno, but the rookie came in the ball. We just played the Texans a few weeks ago at the crib. This time around, we're in Houston. There's no better way to start a game than to connect with your number one receiver. He takes this one 83 yards. Catch and run to the crib. That's how you start a game. But to my surprise, the Texans answer right back with a touchdown drive of their own. And honestly, it's kind of crazy. It's beautiful, actually, to see the love that CJ Stroud is getting from this home crowd. That's what's up. Second and six from the gun, and they only rush four. That's my cue to take off and chew up some of this free real estate. Picking up the first and way more. Second and ten, play action. Rolling out to my right. I don't see Stingley until it's a little too late, but it doesn't matter. I rifle this ball in there, and Trey picks up his second touchdown of the first quarter. Damn near backed up into our own end zone, and on the run to my right, a receiver nobody expected to be this far afield. Derrick Henry up the sideline using his wheels to go 93 yards to the crib. We applying that real pressure here in the first half. And here in the second half, we plan on doing more of the same. Chewing up that field, getting to the end zone, putting points on the board, and our defense getting fantastic stops, holding up strong. And after straight up tearing these boys apart through the air the first half, here in the second, it's going to make it like taking and candy from a baby too easy walking in 16 yards out untouched and crazy enough our first matchup this season was a lot different from this a couple of weeks ago they're here at the crib and it's a packed out stadium but you can tell by the way it sounds we've been ripping this secondary to shreds through the air so much so to the point where i look up and i have so much green grass in front of me i feel like a lion in the wild i really can't believe it. and to cap off an already amazing drive my scrambling mission continues i barely get the ball over the goal line but that's a touchdown shout out to cj shroud my fellow rookie who's going to be great in this league for years to come but once again i outplay the competition and put up monstrous numbers in the process. For the second time this season, T-Law and them Jags then came to town. They ain't come to play around. They struck first. During film study sometime, I just sit back and admire my throwing motion. The stroke that I have with the ball is unlike anything you've seen in the league recently. It's just absolutely beautiful. Quick. So smooth. It's like butter. And delivering strikes on the run makes it even better. Touchdown. We tie this game up. Going into the second half without the lead is not an option. And who made this insane diving catch here on second and ten, I couldn't tell you. But all that matters is my guys in here making plays right now. And from the nine, under center here on second and goal, rolling out to my left, skipping my way into the end zone like it ain't a DB right in front of me ready to knock my head off, but it don't matter. Touchdown. Now here with prime field positioning with an opportunity to extend our lead past four points with a great catch right here picking up the first down. Anytime a defense only rushes four and they don't have a QB spy, it's like self-sabotage. And I hit these boys with the OBJ long jump into the end zone for the TD. But one thing about it, them Jags ain't going away quietly. But our defense, we know they're going to hold up here in the fourth quarter because that's just what they do. And we're going to do what we do on the offensive side to the fullest potential. We're going to put points on that board to put a cap on this one. We finished the regular season with the number one record in the entire NFL, sitting at 16 and one. In my playoff debut, everyone's excited for it, but me, it's time to lock in. For the next few weeks, I'm missing two of my biggest playmakers on offense. And from what I've seen in the media, they're already counting us out. But all the hate and the doubt ain't doing nothing but adding fuel to the fire. My playoff debut at home, you think I'm finna just fold? Tuck my tail? No, sir. Not gonna lie, that first quarter was rough, but you gotta think this is my first game all season without all my playmakers split wide. But it's okay, it's just an adjustment period. And even without D Hop and my favorite red zone target in the Conco, I'ma find some way to get it done, some way, somehow, skipping my way in to tie this game up here in a second. And with those guys being out, all that means is it gives opportunity for other guys on the depth chart to step up and make plays, especially when it matters the most here in the playoffs. Now with the chance to take the lead here in the third quarter, I'm thinking about taking off, but I stopped dead in my tracks to deliver a dime in the back of the end zone to my tight end, Josh Wiley. Defense went and got us to stop exactly what we needed. Play action, dropping back extremely deep. And like I said, it's time for other guys to step up and make plays. And by the end of the day, Josh Wiley's going to be a household name. Now here on first and 10, you know it wouldn't be a successful playoff game if the King can't get in on none. Hand off, easy touchdown. We take a two-score lead here in the third quarter. Now here on a crucial third and three, drop Dropping back, nobody's open. I'm gonna have to skedaddle, taking off, picking up the first, diving into the end zone for a touchdown. I get up and do my little dance. I know we were down a few playmakers, but if you bet against us to lose this game, you're absolutely crazy. A blowout win in my playoff debut, going toe to toe today in the playoffs against Joe. Brr, he might have went crazy with the passing yards, but when it comes to what matters the most, efficiency and protecting that ball, I came out on top today.
Who would have thought the overrated number three pick in the draft would make it to the AFC Championship game as a rookie against one of the more complete teams in the entire league? Buffalo's already struck first, and with an offense of that magnitude, we gotta stay strapped for stride if we wanna compete and actually win this game. Nearly 30 yards out, diving my way in for a touchdown. This week, still missing a few of my key playmakers. They've been smothering my number one and trailing Burke, so I gotta get it done any way I possibly can. I gotta get active, all the way active. From the 24, taking the snap under center, taking off to my right, I'm sandwiched between Von Miller and another defender, making one miss and i'm already celebrating this touchdown from the five yard line let's go nasty work second half action we got a tie ball game here to start the third play action roll out to my right deliver a dime on the run it's just that simple now with the bills one trying to kick the door down with all my guys split wide empty gun design quarterback run perfect play call for this situation easy walk in play action here on first and ten and somehow von miller gets free off the edge but before i take a sack from that guy i'm gonna deliver a strike up the field back in the red zone now with a chance to seal this game up and at this point it's straight recess football running around 10 down in circles but i made the crucial mistake of throwing this ball in the traffic my first turnover in a very long time defense went and got a tremendous stop and with just over two minutes left in this game giving this ball back to josh allen with this much time on the clock will be a gamble i'm not willing to take i have to slow it down weigh my options survey the field take what the defense gives me but here on first and 10 i'm gonna take 30. we run that clock out josh allen and stefan Diggs get no shot at going down and do what we know what they're capable of we are now afc champions and we all know what's up next reaching the super bowl as a rookie is an accomplishment on its own but actually walking out of here victorious is the real goal and hands down we're head to head face to face with the best defense in all of the nfl and oh yeah my boy d hop is back touchdown with a three-point lead here at the back end of the second quarter i'm running around for my life reverting field actually getting up successfully securing the first down sliding down i gave that play everything i had second and ten i'm looking to make the big play but i'm so focused up field i miss derrick hearing wide open in the flats and that results in a sack for nick bosa but i can't let mistakes be the reason we lose this game i have to play damn near flawless in order for to win this game and on the very next play i make the biggest mistake of them all i literally just play the worst first half of football that i've ever played in my life ever and if i don't drop my nuts here in the second half i'm gonna sink this ship and i'll never hit the end of it but if i'm gonna step my game up i need my playmakers right there with me dropping back as deep as i possibly can delivering the dot to d hop that puts us at the three and i'm gonna hand this one out to king henry to finish off this drive when it's all said and done our defense will be the unsung heroes of this entire season to hold that powerful offense to seven points through three quarters is magical if you ask me for the third week straight i'm without my number one red zone weapon in the conquo but when it's all said and done josh wiley will be remembered forever throughout this playoff series he picked up another touchdown we do the unthinkable a 16-1 regular season we walk through the playoffs in dominant fashion and right now honestly wholeheartedly i got a feeling right now in my chest that i can't describe today i achieve a lifelong goal to become a super bowl champion in just my rookie season i'm gonna wreak havoc on this league for years to come and when it's all said and done i'm gonna be known as one of the best to ever do it at the quarterback position